Hey everyone, this is Man in the Black Hat. And Game Collector. And we're back for more Let's Play Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess on Rezowalkers.com. And you already got the first glowing orby soul thing, didn't you? Yes, we did. In fact, Yay! that episode went up on my birthday. Yes! So, and as of this recording, it is his birthday. Yep. So not only did yeah. I put a video up on my birthday, but I also went and did voiceover work on my birthday, just for you guys. He had no cake. Send him cake. Mm. Make sure, make sure to mash it real nice and neatly inside the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I like it. Again, the use of a new controller, which is awesome. Yeah, send him a new controller with inside the cake for his birthday. Ew! I'm gonna have to wash the damn thing. I didn't say it would be... I didn't say it wouldn't be outside of its package now, did I? True. So, send him one, wrap in saran wrap or something, make sure it's nice and clean as it sits inside the cake. <laughs> and, let's see... Over the course of, I think, this episode and the next one, we actually finished this dungeon. Yep. It only took you, like, three episodes to do this, which... Actually is... Pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's a good sum up of this entire dungeon in a, as a whole, because it is in three parts. And we also get the Twilight Realm started. Not Twilight Realm, uh, Hyrule um, Castle started. Yes. So we're on the downward slide and we're getting stuff done pretty quickly. I know by the views you guys are getting kind of tired of Twilight Princess, which is why I'm trying to hurry this along. He just wants to get it done and out of the way, move on, because I'm pretty sure he's sick of Twilight Princess, too. Yeah, I kinda am. Maybe he'll pick it up in another two or three years when he's not actually needing it for work, huh. and he wants to play it. Well, no, I'll play this whenever I feel like. Off, off camera, but, um... Once I'm done here with this, that'll be it. Yeah, at this point, doing the extras is probably not a good idea. Uh, I'll get the extras done, it just won't be immediately. Yeah. Maybe in two, three, maybe four or five months? Maybe. It depends on my schedule. Which, yeah, right that. at the moment, is really up in the air. Like I've probably said already on one of my uh, Skyward Sword Let's Play videos, I'm moving, and yeah, there's not a whole hell of a lot that I can say about that other than I'm really getting stressed out about it. Yeah, moving sucks. I've had to do it like seven or eight times in a lifetime. It's not fun. And I guess I'm going to refrain from making Game Trail Collector cry from the amount of times that I've been moved in my life. Have you been moved once, twice, or... Have you moved at least once every three to five years? Yes. And you're older than me, so yeah. I'm, I moved kind 14 of times before I was 18. You moved what? Fourteen times before I was eighteen. Yeah. I'm not quite there yet. Hmm. And this is... And, part, and that would... And while we may be off topic of the game, this, this is kind of on topic for him anyway. Yeah. Besides, there's no real secret to these Xant hits. Hit them until they die. Done. Double decapitation. 
Double your pleasure, double your fun. But really, all there is to it is hit them until they're dead. Once you do that, it'll open up the... Um, it'll open up the, open the, door. the lock that's uh, hidden in the area. And Find target. Lock onto target. Attack until dead. Pretty much. There's really no secret to this. Just hit them until they're dead. And like they're dead. Said, the path. And now it's a box. That'll contain the key to move on. Yes, there's other boxes in here. They contain um, rupees that rupees. we can't pick up because. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's rupees. I know that I should have all of the bugs by now. But he doesn't. I don't remember which ones I'm missing, so... You're missing the butterflies and I think the mantises. Or the manti. Or whatever the plural mantis is. Yeah. Those. So, those will be part of the extras. Along with the, um... The whole 100 level dungeon. Actually, it's not 100, it's only 50. You get the point. The big deep dungeon that goes on for almost forever. Mm-hmm. That place, yeah, that'll also be in the extras. As she stated when we originally found it in Gerudo Desert. Yep. Because... For one very weird reason, I have never completed it. That reason Whoa. is... Redeads. Redeads suck. Well, I guess I have something on you now in this game. You can find all the Poes, and I can beat the 50-level dungeon. Well, I had the bad luck the last time I did a run of it of getting two Poes at the same time. And they staggered their, uh, their scream attacks. So one would scream and stun me and Wait, hit me oh? and then the next ah, redead would scream and you... stun and hit me and why did you say pose pose don't scream i don't know but, but i meant redeads yeah by that time i just equipped the giant magical shiny armor and then went all out on everything hmm. Yeah, I'm going to try and get all of the Poes so that I have the Infinity Wallet that I can do the giant magical shiny armor and just and then, basically run through the dungeon no problem. And then Link became Iron Man, the end. Shit. Well, the armor is red and gold. This is true. And then when it's the ac then when it then when it's turned off it turns like gray and snow. Oh my God! His armor is a gun double. Well, yeah. Because that's the cut. No, in uh, Gundam Seed, while the er I'm talking about the first series, when the Gundams are in deactivated mode, they're gray and blue. Hmm. What color does Link's magic armor turn when he has no money? Yeah. yeah. Gray and blue. Ah. And yes, and we have we... another Phantom Xanth fight. Also, he got somebody. Yeah, this is basically the same Phantom Xanth fight as before. You're just fighting his minions first off. And if you have watched the Twilight Princess video, um, videos before and the Skyward Sword videos, 
you may have heard us talk about how these things are so much better to fight than the one in Skyward Sword. Yeah, they are. They really, really because are. Because you... Aim is no longer... is not required here. Yeah. Nor is precision, which the Wii Remote Plus doesn't really have much of to begin with. It tries. But it's then, still a bad case of, you know what, it could use some work. You know what, this could use, this could have used some more fine tuning. It's okay, I'm sure they'll get it better with the Wii U, also known as the police noise. Yes. Of course that thing, that thing gets, that thing actually gets two kind of controllers. One that you can be the dungeon master with, and another that doesn't have a screen on it at all. Huh. I've heard that the screen can actually do augmented reality, too. Yes, you can use it as a sniper scope in FPS games. Nice. Augmented reality is something that's gotten very popular with cell phones and their apps. But I haven't seen much of it used in actual console games. Um, I think they're trying to go in that direction with the 3DS. Yeah. Because of the whole projection ability. Ah, get off! No, seriously, off! No. Giant rat slug tentacle things! Ick! And I just love how Big Phantom Zant jumped in to see what was going on and got his butt kicked for daring to. Pops in. Oh, hi, Link! Oh, that hurt, Link! <laughs> Come on. Oh, denied. Come on. There you are. The thing that I would normally do in this fight, instead of trying to chase him, I would stand still and watch for the one holding the ball. Well, that's all fine and good, but you actually want to be close to him when he starts forming the ball. Otherwise, this can be a long sequence. That's what arrows are for. Perhaps. Bomb arrows help too. True. And while I may not like my father, one of his phrases has always struck in me as perfect for gaming. There is, there is never, there is never enough. There is <clears throat> crap. I can't even get the phrase right. And I just had it in my head. Ah, there is no such thing as overkill. Good. There's no kill like overkill. Especially in gaming. You can never have... and You can never go overkill in a game. Well, unless you're playing Vector Man 2, in which case, one of the weapons is literally named overkill. Hmm. In which case, you can never have too much overkill. Yeah. And because it's an old Sega Genesis game, you can just do button input commands on the pause screen to give yourself a lot of overkill. Yeah. Just back when cheating was hard. hard. It's not cheating, it's augmenting the game. Uh-huh. Except it's totally cheating. Well, considering that it is the full-screen weapon, then that kind of is cheating. Okay. Remember what we had to do last time? Same thing. The exact same thing. Chasing the... That is the a ceiling master. Or the weeping ender ceiling master. Oh, you gotta be kidding. Because... Die. All of you die. No, seriously, die. Come on, follow me. You see, the reason I call it the Weeping Ender, the Weeping Ender Ceiling Master is because the moment you leave the room, it can follow you in an instant. Like you're not looking at it. So never blink. Ever. Well, not that it matters. Because it's actually really dirt easy to get through this area. 
a lot more dirt easy than the last area. Oh, anyway. yeah. Last area actually requires a bit of strategy, and it helps if you have a controller that doesn't like to fight you. But we do See, what we can with what we got. His controller likes to put on a luchador mask and boxing gloves. Ugh. And then yells at him. That joke was painfully dumb. Yeah, it was. Okay. Kill the bats. And... Pick a corner. Any corner. Preferably one closest to the door. That you started at. Yes. Drop it there. Funnily enough, the first time you do this... It kind of screws you over by not letting you pop up on the before it uh, actually gets there. So then you gotta go find a corner and stand in it. Come on, come on, follow me. You're playing follow the leader with a giant hand of death. Pretty much. Ceiling Master will follow wherever the orb goes until you get to the front door. And then so. it will follow you into the next room. Ah, darn it. And put it down. Up we go. And you went on the wrong one. Yep. Ow! Jerk. Now uh, this can be th this can be corrected. I hope. Yeah. And now you're a puppy. So we transform the human and get it back. Jerk. And you paused mild stun stuff. Which is not going to be enough to get the damn thing out of my way, so waiting. Still Let's waiting. Let's play the waiting game. And away we go. Yay, you win the waiting game. And up we go. Yay, hurry, hurry, hurry. right one this time. Whoa. Okay, spin around. And just grab it. No lull noping it this time, we're just gonna grab it. Because if you lull noped it, that would have made the hand come closer. Mm hmm. Not that it really matters, because it's a weeping ender seedling mask. Yeah, like you're, that. You're, you're wearing it out. This one's actually not that hard. Just jump from area to area and off you go. Oh, you won't have to worry about me wearing the hell out of that joke considering this is the last time you're ever going to see it. Yay. And yeah, just don't drop the orb and you're good. It's like playing reverse hot potato. Pretty much. Or oddball, yeah. And be sure to fix up the little guy over here. And we're done. We're done with that puzzle. Forever. Forever and always. Until you play the game again. No, forever and always. Got the two souls, the entire city is now powered up, and so is our sword. The Master Sword is now the shiny Master Sword. Light fills the Master Sword. Its blade glows with the golden light in the Twilight Realm. 
Now we can cause double damage to everything that we've caused damage to before. Yay! Sweet. Though, you know what feature in Skyward Sword would have been great in Twilight Princess? The beam sword ability? Well, that and, well, it's not really an ability, it's more of a feature, it's a, more of a game feature. Mm -hmm. Boss Rush mode. Ah, a little bit fun. They kind of do that and, here, but kind of not. But that's, yeah. But I mean an actual, genuine, can go fight every single boss in the game mode. Which, yes, we will do that in Skyward Sword. Yep. Because it, gra it gets you the Hylian shield, which is indestructible, as it should be. It's inconceivable! Yay, just killing things. Because things here just want to be killed. And yes, your sword can actually... If you do it correctly, you can actually repel the darkness. Well, you can do it two ways. The way he does it, which is doing the spin attack. And the way I would do it is just run into there, just tapping the B button and swinging the sword around. Yeah. Like a glow stick. Which it kind of is. It's... Yes, the Master Sword has become a glow stick. Darn it. Oh. Aww. Oh. Transform to no, human. Using the Great Spin will actually make sure that your, um, will make sure that your ability to re repel the darkness goes further. Yep. But seeing as that he's not at full health, Great Spin's not really doable at this point. We were kind of confused at this point, too. Oh. And as long as you're charging up your shot, the um, crystals won't affect you as quickly. Oh, wow. Yay. No, no, no. Jerks. Fuck it off. Well, that was kind of nifty to have your uh, have them hit your shield so they push you back past the past the darkness. Yeah. And see, that's the drawback to using the non-charge attack. You can be instantly hit with the crystals. Whereas using the charge spin attack, you pretty much are immune to that until you act. What the hell? I'm sorry, but low-hanging fruit and cannot resist. Link used magic missile on the darkness! <laughs> Pretty much. It was... it was right there! I couldn't resist it. And here's the best part. Link used magic missile on the darkness. It's super effective. D&D <laughs> &D joke crossed with Pokemon joke. Double the effect. And remember what we had to do to get through that puzzle the first time? Yeah, we gotta do it here too. Whackety, whackety, whackety. Not what I meant. Those guys gotta be punched. A lot. So... And around this time... Yeah. This is when we realized that, oh, I think we needed to kill that thing back there. Yeah. Dork. <coughs> Pardon me. So we just smack over, back up. And I have no idea what that glitch was about. 
What glitch? Oh, there was a short visual glitch. So yeah, these things get get nailed in one hit now, rather than Instead six. Instead of a whole bunch. Yeah. Anything that... Actually, it's two hits rather than six, but anything that's of the Shadow Realm is extremely weak to these, and it doubles your attack power against everything else. So it triples your power against enemies in the Shadow in, in the Twilight Realm, but it only doubles it against everything else. Mm -hmm. That's still pretty nifty. Well, considering it's the Master Sword and can pretty much one-hit anything except bosses to begin with. Unless it's Ganondorf. Yeah. With Ganondorf, it can just allow you to have a chance of winning. But only a chance. You still have to use your sword skill to get through. Unless you're an asshole and use a fishing rod to use Ganondorf's ADD to your advantage. <laughs> Not my fault he's from the desert and has never seen a fishing rod. And watcha! Bird's nest here is actually important to clear out. Yes, it is. Because there's something you need to get here. And most people will be going, okay, I finished everything, what do I do now? This. Yeah. You need to get that key. That one key. There's a key that you need for the door that you're going to get to. And you also, and it's the boss key. Yes, it is that key. And here it is. You've got the Sauron key. <laughs> well, it looks like Sauron's <laughs> temple, doesn't it? I you? know. And just jump. And of course, I use the jump trick to prevent taking damage. Very nice. Hey, it works! And the moment you say Sauron, that makes me think of a scene where, um... I think it's from... It's either from Fellowship or Two Towers where it shows Christopher Lee, and it has the Trollo Roll song playing over his speech. Oh, that's, um... Return of the King. <laughs> ah, either way, it's freaking hilarious. I've, I've only seen the first two. I've never seen Return of the King. Ah. Yeah, it's actually part of the special edition of Return of the King, not the theatrical release. Ah. Either way, I've never seen it. Meh. It's part of the novels, if you've read the novels. Nope. Why? Um, for one, we don't have them. For two, there are some things that I'd rather see than read. I ah. know that sounds like huge blasphemy coming from me. And as interesting as that would be, I'm afraid it's going to have to wait for the next episode, because we're just about done here. Yeah. So, um, this is Man in the Black Hat. And the Ink Collector. We'll see you next time for more Let's Play Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess on ResoWalkthroughs.com right after we kill these guys. So, uh, see ya.